he's not in the union. Um, so that's how I'm able to do anything now. I can be in non-union shows, be in equity shows, and I still can take an equity contract and still get the benefits as well. Uh-huh. Now, do you have to do a certain amount of shows to stay in the union, or is it just paying your dues? Always curious. Uh, to stay in the union? Yeah. You just pay your dues, but now... Now getting into the union is not as easy as it was years ago. Well, of course, I'm sure. You know, they have this membership membership candidacy program, and we didn't have that years ago. You had to just hopefully have a producer that believed in you enough uh, to get your first equity contract, and that's how that all started. It's different now. And so now, as a director. I guess with the FICOR, it doesn't matter. You could pr- produce or direct your own shows, whether they are equity or not, right? That's right. But also, it doesn't it doesn't involve directors. It it's doesn't. strictly for acting. Yeah, a director can direct anything. They can direct anything. Have you done anything on screen? Huh. <laughs> so interesting that you asked. I have. Um, I, I've done some small, small roles on screen. It's not something that I really was interested in doing it just happened to have fallen in it um but it's it's odd odd that you mentioned it because as of late i've been talking about that i'd like to do some screen work mm-hmm. and at this age it's, it's it's i'm surprising myself that it's even something i'm interested in uh so i'm i'm looking at pursuing that uh slowly <laughs> baby steps right um so you uh Created your own theaters. I did. What was the first one you created? My first theater was in 1994, and that was the Angel Garden Cafe Theater in Holiday, Florida. It was 55 seats, and it was a dessert theater. And I had new shows every month. What made you decide... What made you decide it was time for you to start your own theater? Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Um, I had mentioned, if I back up from before how I got to Florida, when my, mm-hmm. my mom passed away, and then I was taking care of my father. At that time, I had also signed an equity contract to... Um, uh, an equity contract to be in Fiddler on the Roof at the Beef and Boards Dinner Theater in Indianapolis. And my father... Um, got sick and I needed to take care of him and they kindly enough let me out of my contract oh. um, and but my wife still went to do it she was playing Yenta in the show but she went to Indianapolis and do it and while she was there and I was in Florida we were separated I was thinking you know what I kind of need to be around here because of my father needing some care mm-hmm. and I thought one night what about a little storefront theater. That would not maybe be a good idea, and could do what we what we enjoy doing and what we were born to do, and be able to stay in the area as well. So I looked in the uh, Suncoast News <laughs> and their classifieds, and I saw juice bar available in Holiday. Something like, you know, 1,200 square feet on US-19. Hmm. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to call and just see what that's all about. So I call, and the woman answers her phone, and she says, hold on one moment. Uh, that's forty nine. Yeah, very good. Oh, yes. Yeah, you can take the oranges, too. Okay. And then she <laughs> came back, and I'm like, I don't think, am I calling like a, a fruit or vegetable stand? <laughs> Where am I calling? And she says, yes, uh, I own the uh, vegetable and fruit stand on Trouble Creek Road. And I'm like, Helen? She says, yes. I'm like, oh, my God, this is Jimmy Ferraro. I'm these, I know her. She lived two doors away from my father. We were neighbors. She says, come over tonight. We'll have coffee and we'll talk about the store and I'll show, I'll show, you, the, I'll show you the place. And that's how that happened. And it was, I knew that it was going to be perfect. My father uh, was better. My father was a carpenter. And um, he built the stage. And uh, he uh, built everything that we needed in that space. And we were there for, uh, I think, almost five years. And we put on a new show every month. It was, and it was packed all the time. Wow. Yeah. Now, was the show uh, just weekends? 
Yes, um, mm-hmm. Friday, two, Friday, two shows on Saturday, and a show on Sunday. And now are these uh, reviews, or what, what kind of shows? Uh, some reviews, but most of them were uh, comedies, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Neil Simon comedies. Um, and we had a new show every month. In fact, I still have a following from that theater, you know, all these years, over 20 years um, of patrons that have followed me. And in fact, for the past four years, my wife and I have been invited to um, star in as singers in the with the Richie's Community Orchestra. And uh, that's at the Spartan Manor. In fact, we're going back this year again on May 10th. We'll have our concert there. Uh, and it's with a 50 piece orchestra. It's, it's quite lovely. At Spartan and Manor? At Spartan Manor, yes. Where are they going to put a 50 piece orchestra in that place? Wow. Oh, it's every every year. Uh, they, yeah, they, yeah, actually, they do. Um, the Ritchie Community Orchestra uh, has shows there, concerts there, like every two months or so. Ours is in May, uh, on May 10th. And the reason I brought it up is that I have people that have been following me for 30 even 40 years that have still come to to see us wow. it's amazing i'm so blessed so grateful and so thankful and what was the name of that theater you had on 19 in, in the, the first one that i just said yeah what was the name of the the, name? A- the angel garden cafe theater angel that was garden. the first one <laughs> yeah it looked like it looked like um uh, a garden inside there and my wife and i are angel people we had angels all over the place mm-hmm. and Patrons would bring us angels, all different kinds. We had Aww. over two hundred, over two hundred in in the theater. Nice. And then from there, I um, directed at the Show Palace oh. uh, for two years, and then from there, I opened a dinner theater, the Angel Cabaret Theater, um, at Southgate. Mm-hmm. And, and that, how did that, that do? That was a two hundred seat dinner theater. Uh, and then after a few years, my wife got a, a suddenly got a call um, that they wanted her to be in um, Menopause the Musical, which, you know, was a tremendous hit. It still is. I mean, still playing it's the 14th year in Las Vegas. Wow. Uh, and she had to go over the next day after the call. We had to go over to uh, Fort Lauderdale to for her to audition for them. And uh, <laughs> we flew back, and on the way, with in in the car driving from the airport, she was putting on her eyelashes and putting on her makeup because we had a performance that night <laughs> at our theater. Anyway, they hired her, and they gave her an eighteen month contract. And we decided that that was really important for her to do. And in the meantime, they asked me if I would be the company manager, which is like the on site producer. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the show, and that was in Denver, Colorado. Uh, so we we closed the theater. We moved to Denver, and Menopause the Musical is the longest running musical in Colorado history. How many years? Well, it played there for the first eighteen months. Um, there was a six month hiatus, and it played another year wow. after that. Uh, and now my wife has been with that show for eight years. And she's played two roles: the Iowa housewife and uh, also the Earth Mother. Is she going? Is she going to travel back to Colorado, or is it just other performances of the music? Oh, well, oh, she was on tours as well. Tours as well. Uh huh. Um, yeah, yeah. That makes me think now. So, as a couple, is it really hard? Like sometimes you're here, and then she has to go away, then you have to go away. Is it? How do you keep yourselves grounded as a couple? You know what? There was one period where we only saw each other once in nine months. But um, thank goodness, you know, uh, at that time we had, you know, Skype, we Skyped all the time mm-hmm. and um, that that helped a great deal. Uh, but, um, you know, a lot of the times uh, we try to be together, um, either be in shows together, if that's at all possible. Uh, or it, it, we make it work. You know, we we really respect each other. We respect each other's talent um, and and the work and what we do and um you know there's there's compromises that have to be made in any anyone's marriage and ups and downs but we're so fortunate that we have the same type of background so mm-hmm. we get it we don't have to like explain why we are taking a role or why we have to go to 
on tour or why we have to take, be on a cruise ship for two weeks, you know, mm. because we get it. We understand we have the same background, which is, you know, the Broadway national tours, that whole type of the business. Mm. Makes sense. <laughs> as well as teaching, you know, in between we teach voice lessons, give acting lessons. Yeah, that's where I wanted to go to next. So when did you decide, let's start teaching stuff? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, um, I guess teaching stuff as a duo, that was in 1989, and we opened up Jimmy Ferraro's Academy of Performing Arts. Mm, where? Holiday. Oh. In Holiday. And uh, boy, oh, boy, we have uh, some students that right now on Broadway in the prom. And uh, <laughs> we, we, I tell our reward is so, it's so great. Um, in fact, um, one of our students, Sarah Del Beato, she Sarah is a, is amazing. She's been with us since she's nine years old. Okay, mm-hmm. and Sarah, her career has skyrocketed. In fact, she stars in my my new show. If I embarrass you, tell your friends, uh, which is a nice segue to get mm-hmm. into that. Uh, Sarah's now 35 years old and so she's been with us all of these years it shows for us and yes and uh, under our tutelage as well she's an amazing talent um, the new show debuted uh, I, I produced it and directed it off Broadway uh, last summer and it was uh, a smash success uh, and it was a, a duo show and now it's been a new version has been written uh, as a one woman show called If I Embarrass You, Tell Your Friends. And it's a tribute to comedian Belle Barth. Now, those of you who have never heard of Belle Barth, Belle Barth uh, was a sensation in the 50s and 60s. She was the first woman to do blue humor. So it's it's kind of like an inspiration to the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Mm. But that was Belle Barth. Bell Barth was considered the female Lenny Bruce. Uh, She sold over 3 million adult party records. And um, her her life story is pretty amazing. She she got arrested because of her blue humor. Um, Yeah, it's and the story is sensational with original material from her nightclub show. And Sarah stars in it. And uh, yeah, in fact, uh, right now we are negotiating for a contract in Las Vegas with the show. Wow, way to go. A Murder Mysteries, which is another thing that I produce and direct. Uh, the Murder Mysteries opening uh, next month is called Happy Death Day to You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's fun. It's a musical comedy murder mystery. Cool. And I've done quite a few of them. Um, for two years, I produced and directed... Um, uh, a murder mystery that I called uh, My Big Fat Italian Wedding Murder. And it played for two years all over. Uh, in fact, it was here in North Carolina, too. Last year we did that. It was sellout here. And um, so it, it, it's been exciting. You know, I have my hands in quite a bit of, quite a few different areas. I see. Is that the show that Susan Capacato Nichols was in? Capacato. Yes, it was. And boy, oh boy, was that wonderful because we, we became such close friends from that as well. In fact, I brought her into North Carolina to do it here, too. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's been good. So I have my hands in the new Bell Barth show and my new Murder Mysteries. And, you know, <laughs> it's just we just keep doing what we're doing, Alex. What keeps you and going? Is, what, huh? keeps you, what keeps you going? Oh, I just think, you know, the challenge, the challenge, uh, the creativity, um, it's a lot of work, but, you know, it's, it's not work work when you're really enjoying what you're doing and you love what you're doing. And this is what I've done my whole life. And that's what a lot of us wish we could do now. I'm very, very fortunate and very blessed, very thankful and grateful every day. I would be too. Now, were there naysayers back when you were starting and people saying, oh, don't, I, you mentioned someone said that you get a real job but were there more that's my were, brother. That's were, my there, brother. were there other na- were there other naysayers that said oh you sh- you're never going to make a living at this i mean were there you know interesting enough um there 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 weren't mm-hmm. naysayers but i will say that my father may he rest in peace he advised me to get a 
vocation <laughs> as well. Um, 